pretty uh, tough on Germany. Thank you. No, I was four, four years as a child. Okay. Uh, then four more years as an officer. Heidelberg is one of my places. Yeah. My, my best friend was born in Heidelberg at the, uh, the army base there. Uh -huh. And then my sister, we had right outside of Stuttgart, Pike, and so she had gone through all of them. So we had to Stuttgart, uh, air bases and everything else. There. Let's give them a. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I believe we're ready to go. It ain't six o'clock uh, yet, Steve. Dr. Ledbetter, we're still working it. We're half, we aren't there yet. Okay. Not quite, Doc. So everybody knows uh, we're having some technical difficulties trying to remote in uh, Dr. Ledbetter, our county manager, who uh, came up positive on a COVID test. And uh, as soon as we can get that, we'll start. Uh, if he doesn't get uh, zoomed in in the next five minutes or so, we're going to go ahead and start anyway. Steve, is there any way you could put on a headset? We're getting, we're hearing ourselves through you. Give him a second, he'll. Yeah, that's cool. he'll that's the that. echo. I was saying. Yeah, that's Corey over there. We hear. I, I am muted, so it shouldn't be an echo from my side. Who's, who's playing the YouTube video? We're going to be streaming live to YouTube. That's the sure, but I mean, yeah. who is, is, is playing the video? They're trying to make it work. Yeah. 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 We'll get there. New technology is always fun. It was especially fun when they were trying this out in courtrooms. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. And we're all like, well, just give it a second. And the, you know, the guy's sitting there going like, but this is very important to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're, we're trying. We're doing our best. I promise. it right now. There's people online watching going, this is not a very interesting meeting. <laughs> okay. You know, it's not going now. Someone tuning in for the first time going, is this how all meetings go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how all meetings yeah. start at six. And they say, we're going to be out of here in time for the football game. <laughs> so let's make sure. Let's get going. Kickoffs at eight though, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll Timer. Timer. Everybody read through their material. We all good. My wife wants me to turn some library books. I think you can start before you go home. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's a nice yeah. drop. Yeah, they do. They have a drop. Oh, Let's go in the night drop. We're not streaming. We got it. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Spalding County Board of Commissioners regular meeting. It is Monday, January 10th, 2022 at 6 p.m. I'd request everyone to please silence your cell phones and all other electronic devices. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Commissioner James Dutton from District 2 to deliver the invocation, followed by Commissioner Ryan Bolden from District 4 to lead us in the pledge. You can all please stand. <clears throat> Bow your heads and pray with me. Our most loving Heavenly Father, Father, we humbly come before you tonight as representatives of Spalding County and the, the citizens thereof. Father, uh, I especially with a heavy heart. Father, please be with us tonight that thy spirit will be here to guide and strengthen us, that we can accomplish the tasks that we have been entrusted herewith to do. Father, please be with our families while we're away, that they will be guided and strengthened as well and protected. 
Father, please be with all those who are sick and otherwise afflicted, that they will, according to thy will, be, be strengthened, be healed, or be comforted. Father, help us to, to know how to live our lives more in accordance uh, with the perfect example of thy son, Jesus Christ. Father, and we ask these blessings humbly in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 If you would, please join me in the place to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For those of you that are not familiar with uh, us doing this, the, to my left are all the county commissioners. To my right are the county attorney and uh, our uh, county clerk. Uh, and then our uh, county manager, Dr. Stephen Ledbetter, is on with us uh, electronically. Um, you should be able to see the screen. What you see on the screen is exactly what the commissioners see in front of them. So there is tr total transparency of what we're seeing versus uh, what you're seeing. Um, you can see we've gone through items one, two, and three. Uh, and now we're at the election of chairman and vice chairman. At this time, I'll turn the meeting over to our county attorney, Stephanie Windham, to call for the election of the chairman and the vice chairman for 2022. Thank Ms. you, Windham. Mr. Chairman. First is the election of the chairman of the Spalding County Board of Commissioners for the calendar year 2022. Are there any nominations for chair? Yes, I'd like to nominate Clay Davis as chairperson. Commissioner Dutton has nominated um, Commissioner Davis. Are there any other nominations? I'll second. I'll move that the nomination is closed. If there's a motion to close the nomination, is there a I'll, second? I'll second, I'll second that. All right, second by Commissioner Johnson. All in favor of appointment of Commissioner Davis as chair for the calendar year 2022, please raise your hand. Unanimous, thank you. Now, Mr. Chairman, you can move on to the election of the vice chair. Okay, same thing. I'd like to uh, open the uh, nominations for the vice chair of the Spalding County Board of Commissioners, and I would like to nominate uh, Commissioner Dutton to be the vice chair again next year. Second. Uh, <coughs> I'll make a second of that motion and make a motion to close the nomination. Okay, I have a second and uh, closing the nominations. Uh, all those in favor? Is there a second to close nominations? Uh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, all, thank you. All those in favor of uh, Commissioner Dutton being the uh, vice chair for 2022, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Thank you. I think I speak for both uh, Commissioner Dutton and I when I say we are honored to be able to lead uh, once again. Now I have a series of uh, appointments. Uh, appointment of the county manager for uh, calendar year 2022. I call for a motion to approve uh, Dr. Ledbetter. I, I make a motion to approve uh, Dr. Stephen Ledbetter as the county manager for 2022. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, I, if some folks have asked and uh, he's already let us know that he has in fact um, accomplish all those, even the extra things that we ask of him. Um, before I'll, I'll let him address specifically what those are, but I think the commissioners know there were some extra issues. He's that, yeah. um, so he, he's gone not only above and beyond in professionally, but in his, in his personal life and private life and everything. He has, he's now 100% dedicated to Spalding County, and we appreciate it. All right. Any more Thank discussion? You. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Five zero, motion carries, thank you. Appointment of Kathy Gibson as the county clerk for calendar year 2022. Call for a motion. So moved. All right, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those. I think you're amazing, that's the discussion. Yes. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Item number three, appointment of 
Dr. Stephen Ledbetter as the Deputy County Clerk for calendar year 2022. So moved. I have a motion to move, uh, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 5-0, motion carries. Uh, appointment of the county attorney for calendar year 2022. Uh, Dr. Ledbetter, have you got something you'd like to say at this time? Yes, I would. I would um, very much like to make a recommendation that we appoint Stephanie Wyndham as the county attorney for Spalding County for 2022. So moved. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. 5-0, motion carries unanimously. Consider appointment of the county zoning attorney for calendar year 2022, Dr. Ledbetter. Again, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, make recommendation that we appoint Mr. Newton Galloway as the zoning attorney for calendar year 2022 for the zoning. All right, I have a, do I have a motion? Motion, motion to approve. Okay, I have a motion second. and uh, a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero, thank you. Consider appointment of County Human Resource Attorney for calendar year 2022, Dr. Ledbetter. Again, a uh, continuation of our Human Resources Attorney for 2022. Excuse me. All right, uh, I'd like, do I have a motion? Isn't it? John Lowry. Oh, Lowry, okay. John Lowry, yes, I'm sorry. I motion to approve John Lowry. Okay, he has been it for a while. Uh, I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero, thank you. Uh, item number one will be omitted under presentations and proclamations. Presentation of a plaque to Commissioner James Dutton from UGA, the Carl Vinson Institute of Government, and the ACCG for completion of all classes to become a certified county commissioner. Dr. Ledbetter. Want to come down there and take a picture? Please, yes. yes. We're coming around. Come on. Sir, buddy, you're going to stand up on the platform up above. Mr. Dutton has completed his ACCG requirements for certified county commissioner. Congratulations to uh, Commissioner Dutton. Uh, consider a presentation of service award for recognition for 25 years of service to uh, Lieutenant Tim H Hendricks of the Spalding County Fire Department. Chief Polk, Chief Boyd, Boy Bird. Bird, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate that. Uh, I have the pleasure tonight to present to you Lieutenant Timothy Hendricks. Come on up there. He's kind of shy. Uh, this, this is a sad and sweet report in one time. 
because not only are we recognizing 25 years of service, we're also announcing he's officially retired from the Spawn County Park Park. Oh. Oh. And with that, we're losing somebody who's been one of the most positive influences I've ever experienced in my 30 plus years in the fire service, and I say that honestly. Um, he started service December 24th, 1996. So it's an interesting time to start. He was actually promoted lieutenant in 2007. And one thing about Lieutenant Hendricks I found is he's one of the people you could reach out to and ask him to do anything and all you got was a smile, yes sir. He would change stations without moment notice, he would do anything. Uh, he was the epitome of customer service with a smile and compassion to our citizens. So as a citizen of Spalding County, I wanna thank you for your service and also tell you that he has been a mentor to many of our firefighters to include current officers and let you know you'll be leaving a legacy behind. So Tim, I wanna thank you personally. Thank you. Both of you move up here in front of us, please, and uh, we'll get a picture. Lieutenant, would you like to say a few words? Please. Get in there. No, thank you, sir. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. You'll say anything. All right. Item number seven. Uh, consider approval of financial statements for the five months ending November 30, 2021. Ms. Garrison. You've got the financial statements for November since there wasn't a second meeting in December. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, motion to approve. Okay. Uh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, all right. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. 5-0. We're going to the ball game. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That was. I think that was inappropriate. Okay. Citizen comments. Speakers must sign up prior to the meeting and provide their names, addresses, and topics they wish to discuss. Speakers must direct your comments to the board and not to individual commissioners or to the audience. Personal disagreements with individual commissioners or county employees are not a matter of public concern and personal tax will not be tolerated. The chairman has the right to limit your comments in the interest of disposing of county business in an effective and respectful manner. Speakers will be allocated three minutes to speak on their chosen topics as they relate to matters pertaining to the jurisdiction of the Board of Commissioners. No questions will be asked by any of the commissioners during the citizen comments. Outbursts from the audience will not be tolerated. Common courtesy and civility are expected at all times during the meeting. No speakers will be permitted to speak more than three minutes or more than once unless the board votes to suspend this rule. The only person signed up is Alan Marble. I think you want to speak for your subdivision. Okay. Okay. Thank you, attorney. Item number nine. Consider approval of the minutes of the Spalding County Board of Commissioners regular meeting and executive session on December 6, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Sorry. All right, I have a motion to approve and I have a second. Uh, any discussion? I want to thank you all again for making accommodations for me being out of the country at that time. That was, um, that was an important trip for us. We didn't know it at the time. But. Yes. All right, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Five zero, thank you. Old business, item number nine. Approve TSPLOS, next steps. Issuance of bonds for TSPLOS. Tonight we are lucky enough to have uh, Todd Barnes from uh, Raymond James here to be able to talk. I'd like for you to step forward at this time, give us uh, your update, and then we will move into uh, motion to approve. Thank you. Great. Thanks, sir. And I didn't know if before I started in, if, if Dr. Ledbetter had any comments he wanted to make okay. on this item before I started. Dr. Ledbetter? No, sir. 
Yes, sir. Go ahead, Todd. Thank you very much for being here this evening. I very much appreciate the uh, the input that you're going to share with our commissioners. Great. Very good. Well, thank you. It's great to be with you uh, as always. Um, as you know, you uh, the voters approved the TSPLOST referendum, and um, and uh, in with the authorization to issue up to ten million dollars of bonds to advance fund some of the projects. Um, the tax will begin April 1st. Um, so uh, you all have approved the results of that election. Um, you know, next steps are involved of uh, getting the bonds validated by the Superior Court of, uh, of Spalding County. And so that process is, is underway. Um, and so what we want to talk with you about tonight um, is the, uh, let me just get a few schedules in front of me here. Um, the process for issuing the bonds, what it, the timing that's involved in that and how that would work. Um, the, the process to, to issue the bonds, as you've experienced before when we've done the regular SPLOS transactions, is about a uh, between 60 and 90 day process um, to get the documents prepared, go to the credit rating agency to reestablish your, your credit rating on the bonds, go to market, um, and then proceed to the closing to, to deliver the funds. And so um, we had laid out a schedule of moving forward with that uh, starting later this month, kind of targeting to issue and close the bonds uh, around the end of March so that by the time the tax started, you would have the proceeds of the sale of the bonds uh, uh, to go ahead and get started on the, uh, the projects that you all have on your priority list. Um, you have, you know, through the first two years of the program, about 16 and a half million or so of project costs. So the $10 million of bond proceeds um, will allow you to go ahead and begin getting started on projects, get those bid out. You know, we're seeing, as you all have experienced, um, significant inflation and, in, you know, generally speaking, I guess they're using a number of six or six and a half percent, but we've seen in the construction side of things, cost of materials and things much higher than that. So going ahead and be able to bid out projects, get the funds in hand so that you can do that and sign contracts for those to get that work started will allow you to hopefully minimize some of those inflation costs, get these projects off to a running start. And then from there, going forward, you'll have the sales tax collections each year that will pay the debt service on the bonds and then also pay for projects on a pay-as-you-go basis through the remainder of the five-year program. And we're talking about, of course, these are estimates at this point, but we're talking about issuing bonds at, a, at an interest cost of less than one and a half percent. So it's a very attractive time to, yeah. to be in the market and um, certainly much less than the cost of inflation. Right now. <laughs> we're, we're very excited about that course. <laughs> As you should be. So, um, you know, we, we're seeing you know, this week we've seen interest rates move up mm -hmm. a little bit with the talk yeah. of the economy and, and things, but uh, again, still a very attractive time near very. historic lows. So, um, so that um, is uh, sort of the quick overview of it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I think what's the agenda item in front of you tonight is just to authorize us along with the staff to move forward with that process to get the bond issuance underway and completed for you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Barnes. I mean, any questions for him before we move on? Uh, yeah, I do, and I, these are probably not for him. I'm, I'm interested. What you said our annual collection for the county would be how much? We were, didn't we estimate it would be ten million dollars a year? It's it's in that neighborhood. You you know you the referendum set a maximum collection of fifty eight million dollars over the five year period. That anticipates some growth in collections. The t splost uh, brings in a little less than a regular SPLOST um, for a couple of reasons. There's some items, fuel and, and car sales that are not included in the t splost collections. So therefore, collections are roughly about 85% of what the regular SPLOST brings in. Um, so. Um, Is that because those are already taxed for transportation correct, issues? Correct, those are already covered, so. Um, so we're looking at, um, so I, <clears throat> excuse me. So I guess my question then would sort of be for Steve. If we're, if we're really only going to be collecting about 80% of what we thought we were collecting 
from the regular sloths. How high did we estimate, or did we estimate based on that 80%, approximate 80% collection, rather than based on what we've collected the last five years on this right. other one? The projections that we did prior to calling for the referendum factored in those adjustments, and then we projected a growth rate um, to get you to that, setting that cap of the 58 million. That is correct. So to answer your question, yes. Okay. We did, we did figure all that in before we came out with the number the of 58 million. Yes. Okay. All right. Any, any other questions? All right. I move for a motion. Well, I, excuse me. In, before we get to any kind of specific motion, I just want to, to put it out there so that everybody understands where I'm at. When they came and presented, this is what we're going to do, here's the plan, this is what we're going to okay. spend on each project, and we all agreed we're not doing this per project, we're doing it per allocate, you know what I'm saying, like we're going to spend this much on sidewalks, this much on, and when we're out of money on that project, we, the sidewalk stops there. Like that's, you know, whatever the project is, it's not, well, it went $6 million over, so we need to, nope, this is how much, that's, that's what we all agreed to on there. Bonding was also part of the agreement that we all reached, like this was, this is the package that we took to the voters, the, vo and the voters approved. It's now up to us to stick as close to that exact thing as humanly possible. Obviously, you know, prices will change and, right. and, oh, and questions will change, with, you know what I'm Within but, our control. Right, right, but within our control, mm -hmm. it is now incumbent on us to stick as exactly to that as possible. Uh, so people have already come and said, well, instead of doing North Hill, we should do, nope, nope. Yeah. We, we, the, the initial sidewalks were mm -hmm. for North Hill, that's what we're doing. And that's, that's specific, that's we're specific not, written. So. Well, what if we did, nope. No, yeah. See, I'm not, Here's I wasn't at. aware that we had already assigned sidewalk projects or um, my, my concern with what you're saying, and I totally, so totally yeah. agree with you and understand that this is how much we have annually to, to do whatever we have to do. But at the, I don't recall on the ballot that we said that we were gonna be bonding. I think that was a decision that was made afterwards in these sessions. No, and it was on the bottom. It, it was, was on our, on our yes, it it, was. It's, it's required it by law to be in the, yes, uh, it in the resolution. So yeah, yes, it was. It was on the record. How much? 10 million. Up, up, up to 10, 10, but I think our discussion was really for like a five million initial, initial bond or something. Five years. But you, we gave ourselves some padding in case weird stuff happens. And again, Correct. that's, mm -hmm. we're still trying to stick as close to where what was on that ballot, and that ballot encom encompassed by reference the documents that they had created as far as here. Right. So this will not be, this road, will not be another 2015 sploss, basically. Right, right, right. Like, That's and, what we got. And, and it's, it's also not, hey, we're going to do this many miles of road or this many miles. Of, nope. It's this much of the money goes to this project, and when, we're, when that much of the money is over, like, that project's done, and we move, move to the next one. And so this is very money driven. Right. Just make sure. So, and, and I, it's not and I project get driven. That. But when you run the projects, or when we run the projects, as we listed them, mm -hmm. and the projects that are on the front end that get a chance to get to get done immediately because we bond, if that costs more money, that means that the projects that are on the back years, mm -hmm. which are the years that mine and your district actually have roads being paid. That means that if the money's run out, we don't get any, no, any no. roads paid. So because we allocated a specific amount of money to that road. For example, if it was, let's take Ellis Road. I think most of that was already repaved, so I'm just gonna use that as the example. If, if we allocated $3 million to repave, I'm again, picking a random number, Ellis Road. Like, if that got us 30 feet of Ellis Road, then that got us 30 feet of Ellis Road. If that gets us all of Ellis Road and there's extra rollover, then we can roll that over to something else. But as soon as we hit three million, the truck stop, we're done, that's it. Paint the lines, we're gone. Because then we're moving on to the next project. That way, we know exactly how much we have allocated to each of these projects. It's not a certain number of miles of Ellis Road, it's this much money of, of, of the collections towards this, this much money towards this, this much money towards this. That way there isn't well, but my project's running late, and my project's, you know, hey, if, if, it, if you only got 10 feet of Ellis Road, then that's how much we've got. Once it runs, once that project runs out of the money that we allocated or budgeted for it, like, it stops. 
It stops right there. And if that means that, well, we're getting a great deal on North Hill and we can take North Hill all the way to Jordan and keep going, you know, like, great. But as long as it's within that amount that we allotted for it. Now, to, to, let me just, I think I can clarify this a little bit because I know where Gwen's going to here and I, and I know what you're saying. And, and it's just a clarification because I think some of these roads were actually done in phases, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think what she's trying to say is to make sure that the roads that were on the back end of, of that phase still get, right. get done. Okay, right. so it's, and that's when, it's the way, which will be, but the way you're saying it, which I know is it's just communicating. You're saying once, once the money is out, we're gonna move, you know, regardless of, of how long the road is, once that money is out, we move on to the next one. I think that's what you're saying, which in essence, there, there should be more than enough money for our roads to get paved too. Yeah. yeah. So let me tell you what I'm hearing, and I know what you said, but this is what I'm hearing in my head. So if we get to the end of the first year and the extra cost is a million dollars more than we thought it was going to be, so we're a million dollars less on projects. In the second year, do we start finishing up the first year? because we're gonna leave some higher priority roads because the ones that are in the second year are lower priority. So my question is, how do we, how do we transition from one year into mm -hmm. the next? Because obviously if you got a project going, you're not gonna stop it right. because the money ran out. You're not gonna leave half the road undone. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. That, we, we very specifically said exactly that. We're gonna spend this much on these projects and when the money runs out, we're not going to have the same issue that we had with this last gloss of, oh snap, what do we do? Because we're this one we ran into, you know, we had a dynamite, and we had to spend extra, like so we have to borrow from these other projects to finish it. Nope, this much has this much money, and if it was a pickleball field and we only got four of them, then we only get four because now we're out of money. But if boy, it it worked, it actually was cheaper than we thought. We could have fifty pickleball court, then we. Get, but it's this much money allocated to each thing as opposed to how we're gonna do this thing however much it costs and then we're gonna spend it out of this pool. Uh -oh. We had pre sort of allocated the money to each of these projects and when the projects was out of money, and we could do that with transportation because only the, only the bus was like a fixed right. number. That's Everything nice. else was like how much mm -hmm. of the road can we get done with this much money and we said, this is how much money we have for this road, this is how much money we have for this sidewalk, this is how much money we have for this, and if the sidewalk stops in the middle of somebody's property and we don't get to even get to the next property line, we ran out of money, that's it, that's where we're See, at. That to me does not, and, and I don't mean this disrespectful at all, that doesn't make sense to me because that was if the you're project. gonna start a sidewalk project and you know that it needs to be 500 feet and you only got enough money for 200 feet, why would you do a, a sidewalk to basically... Uh, again, see what I'm, I'm, saying? I'm using a sort of worst case scenario. I yeah. doubt we'll get somewhere and be like, oh, shucks, we're out of money. Like, right. I think we'll yeah. have a plan to be able to right. know exactly. I just needed to But right now, it's w w wherever we're at. We hope I, we can get all the hill. And that's what I meant earlier when I say within our control. Texas. Within okay. our control. What I'd like to do is, this is about one step. Right. Getting the bond approved for us to approve the bond. And, which and on the happen. retreat, I want to be able to talk through the rest of this where we can sit down and say, idea. this road, here we are, right. do th talk through this. This isn't the time that I'm prepared for us to do this. This is the first step. So, okay. All right. Sorry about I, I the only no, no, that's okay. I want, this is what, now plan. everybody think through it because mm -hmm. when we get to the retreat, I want to be able to do that. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to approve uh, bonding? So move. All right. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Motion carries. Thank you, Todd. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate your presentation, and we appreciate you what you're doing for us. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Great. you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Item number two under old business: lift from the table and consider a request from the staff to approve a joint resolution between the Griffin Spalding Board of Education and the Spalding County to approve and submit the redistricting map. Motion to lift. All right, motion to, motion to lift. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by, raise your hand. I'm sorry, you're good. Yeah, I'm gonna learn that soon. Yeah, I'm the one approved. Okay, uh, all right, uh, Dr. Ledbetter. I had a great conversation with, um, with Keith Simmons with the Board of Education 
last week in respect to the Board of Education adopting the joint resolution to move us forward for redistricting. Uh, I believe that Stephanie Wyndham has that joint resolution with her this evening. Uh, and our recommendation to the commissioners is that you approve the redistricting map as presented by the Office of Legislation, Legislative Reapportionment in collaboration with the Spalding County uh, School Board. Thank right, you very I, much. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? How much did it cost? For us, it was absolutely free to do this. Remember, this was going to be with Flow, and it was $34,000 to do it. An estimated. Estimated $34,000. And uh, so we're not paying for it. We say, saved, is my, my way of looking at it, $34,000 of tax dollars to being at able least. to do it this way. All right. All those in favor? Hold on, hold on. Well, we're still in discussion. I, I still have the same issue with this that I brought up the last couple of times we talked about it, which is... The, the few roads that are oh, moved yeah. out of the, the downtown, downtown that's a block, and so now downtown is sort of halved, and I still have that issue with it. I get that I'm in the minority and that this is going to pass, mm -hmm. but I, I just want to let you guys know that that's why I'm about to vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor of approving the redistricting, raise your hand. Four. All those opposed? One. All right. Thank you. Uh... Item number three, lift from the table and consider on the first reading an ordinance and call for an election to establish the marshal's office for Spalding County. I think we should wait on that until we hear back from the sheriff. Okay. So just uh, no action and we move on. Sheriff, we would like for you to come talk to us pro uh, as a group later on. We'll set a date for you to be able to talk to us about the marshal's office specifically and your support or non-support of that. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, we're going to leave that Jeff, on you the... Going undercover? What's, uh, What's that? You going undercover in, 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 in your future? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is. Okay. Um, I they didn't lift it. We didn't I didn't lift, lift so it from the table. Stays. Okay. So do we need to make a motion not to... Mm -mm. No. no action, just don't no, address it. Just, it just stays. All right, okay. we're going to have the sheriff come talk to us. Uh, all right, lift from the table and consider request from the Spalding County Community Development Group to accept the revised final plat for Roberts Run Subdivision Phase 2. The Most applicant important. has met all requirements for final plat approval for this subdivision and all departments and agencies have approved the plat as well as physical infrastructure related to the site. Motion all right. Uh, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? To lift. So to lift. To lift. Oh, excuse me. I have a motion to lift. So we need a, I think, Gwen, did you just say? Okay. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. We're lifting it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. Happy New Year to you. Um, you've seen our packet. Um, Miss Kathy, if you would not mind, please pull up on their screens the revised final plat, uh, Roberts Run revised final plat, page okay. two. But uh, if you will see, I believe one of the reasons why this was tabled, and forgive me, commissioners, I came into this case in employment, you know, in the middle of it, but it looked like there were some questions with regards to lot seven and lots eight uh, on the plat and the, their distance to f existing fire hydrants that we have here in Spalding County. If uh, you'll direct your uh, attention to the screen, there are two arcs on this uh, revised final plat that show that lot seven and lots eight are both in fact within a 500 foot radius of an existing fire hydrant already in Spalding County's inventory uh, when it comes in. So therefore both lots will be compliant. Um, I've got some other information and if y'all have any further questions, mm -hmm. I can go. But staff recommendation would be to approve this revised final plat. All right, motion to, do I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. I have a motion to approve, do I have a second? Page two, Miss Kathy. Um, I'll second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? So, yes. so yeah. this meets all the requirements. We didn't approve it last time because we thought it didn't. The fire hydrants. It did. From the fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. so but now we've got more fire hydrants being built. Yeah, I don't. Just, I we just didn't measure correctly. Okay. What? Uh, Mr. Commissioner, may I? Yeah. Correct. Um, Mr. Commissioner Dutton. Um, so if 
you will go to, actually, I've got. Is that it up there? That's, no. No, that's, that's the old no. one. That's the old plaque that y'all take. Oh, it's a new plaque. It's a revised plaque. I believe I have found what created the issue, if y'all will bear with me while we, you know, I'll load it up. But uh, long story short, if you go to the GIS map that uh, Spalding County has from uh, you know, Q Public, there's actually a little orphan uh, triangle that's actually on that map and it's reflected on the GIS map. That's actually a remnant from a landlot line. So I believe the map was originally incorrect at the tax assessor site and it's also illustrated on the uh, revised plan. So it's the, the top of the 0110 POC. If you'll click on that, uh, if you'll rotate that uh, clockwise. Sure you can. Yes, ma'am. So if you will uh, zoom in on um, the southeast corner, so the lower right corner. All right. You see the vertical line that comes down, Mr. Okay, Chairman, yeah. fellow commissioners? Okay. That's actually a landlock line. So that's how Georgia was divided back in 1787, you know, uh, you know with the... Uh, uh, after the Revolutionary War. So the actual bold lines that are in there are your property lines. So that little triangle that's down there in the uh, bottom right corner is actually not its own independent lot. It is actually a part of lot eight as indicated on this survey. So I've already talked to uh, Jerry Johnson and his staff with the uh, tax assessors. They actually already put in the order to fix the GIS map from the Spalding County side. So that way it will be reflective that it's uh, one parcel and not actually two parcels that makes it up there. But I believe that's where the, the trepidation was because if you use everything to the west of that uh, landlock line, it is actually more than 500 feet from the actual fire hydrant that's on West Ellis Road to the south and to the east. But since that's part of the same actual parcel of land, that's just delineated as a landlot. If you zoom in really, really close, you can see where the landlot that line is actually dot, yeah, dashed in dots. So it's not actually not a bordered line for a, a property border. So uh, I don't think we knew about the, the hydrant that was on West Ellis. They, they yeah. told us so the closest one was the one okay. to the north. So, end, so. so I want to just say, to you, are you saying that lot seven and eight are the same lot? No, ma'am. So um, he's talking about. This Madam Commissioner, the original plot that our plat that y'all looked at, lot seven and eight were just lot seven. The proposed revised final plat actually splits them into two lots. So lot seven is as indicated uh, on this on this plat, and the lot eight is as indicated. Those dashed arc lines that are the circle are the distance from existing fire hydrants that we already have in our inventory for Spalding okay. County. So you can see where lot seven is covered by the fire hydrant that's up on West McIntosh Road. And you can see on the very, very bottom right corner, you can see that little bitty arc that comes in. There's a fire hydrant on West Ellis Road. And I myself went out with Ch uh, Fire Marshal Ch uh, Harold Williams and measured it. We got roughly 434 feet from the pin that was flagged by the surveyor uh, that marked this property. So we actually have walked it ourselves. Okay. I think that's what the issue was, is we didn't know that there was one of them there. Yes, sir. So we looked at this and said the one there on the corner of West McIntosh and Cheetah far. is the closest, and mm -hmm. so eight is just is out of range. Right. Yes, but sir. if that one touches... Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have a rough map. Uh, Miss Kathy, if you go to page... I don't, I don't think we need any more information. Yeah. We've got what we need. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, motion to approve. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. All right. Well, wait, wait, wait. Ryan, okay. motion to approve. I seconded. We just got a vote. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. 5-0. Thank you, Brad. We Thank appreciate, it. appreciate it. Good job finding that and working it and walking all the way through it. New business, item number nine. Consider approval of a contract with the Blue Cypress Consulting to prepare the comprehensive plan update. Dr. Ledbetter. Commissioners, you have inside of your packet the presentation and the scoring cards that we used, that staff used, in order to um, provide information on the viability of each one of the vendors who subscribed and made application for our bid for our comprehensive plan, our impact fee plan, and our um, community work plan. The staff recommendation after careful consideration to include the ability to respond by September the, uh, the 30th of this year for our comp plan is Blue Cypress. Um, 
at a price of $204,894. Okay. All right, thank you. And, Dr. And Ledbetter. We have a recommendation. You have, and your rec the staff that. recommendation is Blue Cypress. Yes, that is, please forgive me. Yes, my recommendation and staff's recommendation is Blue Cypress Consulting. Uh, in the preparation of our comprehensive plan, our impact fee plan, and our community work plan for 204 894. Motion to approve. All right, I have a motion to approve. I have a second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Five zero. This is really a big issue for us. Remember, this is a big, big thing in the end. All right. Item number two, consider requests for, from Parks and Leisure Services Advisory Commission to consider transportation to and from the Aquatic Center to be included in the Comprehensive Transportation Plan. Dr. Ledbetter. And I do not believe, and I'm sorry I cannot see the audience, but I do not believe that Ms. Carmichael is with us this evening. TJ's here. TJ is. All right, TJ. Come forward, TJ. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. Uh, as you are aware, the CTP uh, planning is ongoing. The Parks and Leisure Services Commission uh, wanted to register some public comment in reference to that. I believe you have the letter in your package. Mm -hmm. um, the main interest of the letter was to a look at walkways and trail systems to the aquatic center, um, options via van or bus to the new aquatic center, um, options via van or bus to all parks and leisure services facilities in Spalding County, uh, provide walkways and trail systems to link all citizens of Spalding County with a network of walking and bicycling options, and to look at existing trail plans that exist so that they could have a comprehensive study of those. I like it. All right. I think that's, that's mm -hmm. great. All right. I mean, to me, like, because it's there at the Lake Spring Valley and that, that whole area is like a huge source of employment for everyone in town, to me, that like is obvious that that should be included as somewhere that the transportation well, and the transportation piece, just because it, where it is located, right. needs to be a factor because it is out right. there. So. Yes, but that's understandable. And all, we're, all they're asking for is us to make sure that it's right. submitted yeah. to the uh, plan to be able to get in there. All right. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Thank you, TJ. Consider recommendation from the Parks and Leisure Service Advisory Commission to apply for a grant from the National Trust for Historic Preservation African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund benefiting our legacy, the Griffin Spalding Amer African American History Museum. Dr. Ledbetter? Uh, Ms. Cantrell, I believe you're up this evening. Yes, I'm here. All right, so hi everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we have an opportunity to submit for a really, really cool grant through the National Trust, and we're going to be applying for $50,000 that will be monies, if awarded, that will go towards interpretation and programming inside the museum. So currently, we have approximately $200,000 of that SPLOS money that will go towards FFE on the inside, and that's great but I want this museum to be as amazing as possible. So if we can help alleviate that cost with this grant, that would be greatly appreciated if we're awarded it. And what would you like to know about it? I can tell you everything. Uh, how we can help you get it done. We would love to help in any way possible. I can and send I don't you think all, anybody's gonna think I can send you all a link to my Word document. Pop in there, give me your comments, for sure. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Okay. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Very good. Very good. Very nice. Thank you. Sure. All, Thank all you. those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Appreciate what you're doing. This is absolutely great. We so appreciate yes. your initiative to be able to right. get this. So yes. thank you. Yes, we do. Thank you. Any, anything, anything we can do, we would love, we would love to bend over backwards for you. Yay, good. All right, item number five. <laughs> Consider requests from the Georgia Department of Transportation to make necessary changes. Four. Wait, we skipped four. one. I've got two. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, okay, yes. 
35K more. Um, so the next one is a look at our next steps. So I attached a, um, a document for you all. On one side of this page, you will have kind of my three, six, one year projection of the strategic plan. It is a plan that will help the doors get opened. It is there for whether it's you all, the steering committee, our staff, everybody to know what we need to do to get the doors opened. With that in mind, um, there are some next steps that we need to possibly consider. So on the reverse of that page, the number one thing that we would like to look at is possibly partnering with a professional marketing and communications firm. This project is amazing, and this project is a huge, big deal, and we want to make sure that we're taking every correct step we want to make sure that we're representing ourselves well with the public, with the community. Therefore, we think that it might be best for us to look into partnering with somebody who has professional skills that pertains to African American tourism or cultural heritage, something like that, slightly above my pay grade and my expertise. So that's one thing. The next thing we'd like to also consider is a research aid some form of help to compile and search through all of the research that we're gathering. To date, this history of this amazing community doesn't exist outside of the individuals who lived it. So we have to find a way to write that book. We have to find a way to create it and compile it in a way in which the public can come and experience it. I need help. So we need to also look in some ways that we can get more hands on that project. And lastly, we also need to start a conversation about potential long-term financial sustainability, whether that's a friends of organization to help raise funds for this, an endowment, a foundation. Are we charging entrance through the museum? These are questions and conversations that I personally would like to start talking about now so that as we move forward, we can have these things in our mind. So what I'm asking for, presently with this, is one, to start those conversations, and two, to ask you all if it would be okay for me to research how much it might cost to partner with a marketing firm to get some research aid, and then come to you all at a later time with those numbers. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Do you have any questions for me? Mm -mm. Do we need to have a motion to do that, allow her to do that? I, I think that's just okay. a consensus. Consensus should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm when you said, you know, friends of, mm -hmm. you know, like, that's a stellar idea. Cool. Like, I, um, I'm a big fan of, of raising money through donations. Yes, cool. sir. And I'm, and I'm very proficient at it. So as Sweet. soon as soon as there's a, a, a target to give it to you, please let me know. I sure will. We'll, we'll get that done. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dutton. All right. Rhea, Rhea knows. Yes. All right. Thank you, ma'am. We Thanks appreciate so. it for your update. Thank Thanks you. Much. Thank you, Morgan. All right, number five, consider requests from Georgia Department of Transportation to make necessary changes to the intersection to make the intersection safe for all who use it. Dr. Ledbetter? First off, uh, TJ? We talking about? Sure. Mr. Commissioner and Board of Commissioners, now the Georgia Department of Transportation has taken a look at the intersection of County Line Road and Georgia 7. That would be the intersection directly south of the Ingalls intersection. They have looked at it in perspective of um, accidents and a large amount of those accidents. Uh, they have done traffic studies and they've indicated a study that you should have in your packages. And what they are recommending is that um, at their cost that they'll install a R cut, which is a reduced conflict U-turn. So if you were coming off of County Line Road going on to Georgia 7, you would be able to make right turns only, and then you would go up north and then do a U-turn to go back down south if you originally wanted to go south from County Line Road. And then they're also recommending additional um, re uh, visibility in that intersection, so they're going to look at the right of way and taking out shrubs and trees so that you could okay. uh, have better visibility in each direction. They are going to fund that project and are looking for your recommendation 
uh, to join them. There was a vehicle crash there? Or there's been there? several. So if you look at the report, there's been several um, accidents, several crashes uh, in that vehicle, area. Not the pedestrian involved. The vehicles. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because ain't nobody crossing the street over yeah. there. Ain't nobody crossing the street. So essentially you wouldn't be able to go south on County Line Road? Like you, you, you'd have to... You wouldn't be able to go south on the four lane. From County Line Road, if you wanted to go south, you would go north first and then do a U-turn. They would put in a new U-turn and then come down. Then you would go back south. It's called an R-cut. Uh, there's recommendation and they're starting to install those throughout the state of Georgia uh, to alleviate the safety concerns of this nature. Uh, there was one recently put in at uh, Lamar County several years ago at uh, Grove Street, and they have dramatically reduced accidents there. 2081 has one, if you, or a couple of them, if you've drive, driven down 2081. But this is them trying to do better with their money. It's a busy intersection out there. Really it is, it's, I'm yeah. not going to talk again. There's a a lot yeah. worse places, but I mean, they're spending the money. I mean, it's yeah. like the That's biggest wide open. You should be able are, to see something. Are they putting in a new U-turn? Yes. So that that would be south of the red light. South of the red light. <laughs> what? <laughs> we. It seems like the whole issue could be solved with a caution break, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, Roger. Okay. I, I, hey. That's, that's bizarre. Now, so, but this is a, they're asking us for permission because it interacts with County Line? Because, I mean. That's correct. That's, that intersection is inside of Spalding County. It's inside Spalding County, and so they want to make sure we say They're yes. asking for a letter of how concurrence. Many, how many families Whose district is that? paid their entire tax bill, you know, didn't buy their kids Christmas and whatever, spend, spend money on this? Okay, if that's what the state wants to spend their money on. All right, do I have a motion to approve? So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right, motion to approve and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying, by raising your hand. Five zero, motion carries. Thank you, TJ. Uh, consider approval of the following 2022 alcohol license renewal for the retail of sell and beer and wine. Q and R Incorporated uh, doing business at uh, Food Market at 1650 North Hill Street, uh, beer and wine, no violations. Motion to approve. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your hand. 5-0, motion carries. Uh, consider request from the Georgia Department of Transportation to enter into an MOU for replacement of the bridge on county line at Potato Creek, southeast of Gordon. It sounded like there was a, a GDOT guy that just happened to drive down county line and just had a bad time and was like, how do I change county line right here? All right, TJ. I think this one's pretty straightforward. Um, we participate in the local bridge replacement program with GDOT. They fund these bridge replacements. Uh, we're very successful in getting them, and this is a continuation of that program. Motion to approve. All right, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Where is that funding coming from? GDOT. GDOT. Now, we have a part of that. We have to. The state of Georgia. For the bridge? Yes, ma'am. I, I thought I read that it said that we would be responsible for some utility moves and other expenses. That is correct. We are responsible for the utilities. And so her question goes to where do we get the funding for the utilities? Was that, was that already budgeted in this year's budget, or, or where are we talking about pulling that good. money from? Utility? Yes, ma'am. This, man, uh, this uh, bridge replacement has been on the calendar for a considerable amount of time, and this money has already been allocated. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's GDOT money and budgeted Budget money. money. When, uh, when my grandfather and great uncle worked for GDOT, this is the exact kind of All right. For these little bridges, mm -hmm. not like 285 bridges, like that's all they did. I have, uh, do I have a motion to approve? 
motion to approve. Oh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. Excuse me for getting lost in there. Okay. Motion approves 5-0. Consider requests from staff to close the Jenkinsburg Road Bridge. Dr. Ledbetter. Um, so, unfortunately, Brian Epson is not able to join us this evening for the same reason that I am not able to join. Uh, and he has prepared a document for your review along with the Georgia Department of Transportation's document indicating that there is a need to temporarily close the Jenkinsburg Bridge, the Jenkins Road, uh, Jenkinsburg Road Bridge for life safety issues. I've had a conversation with Butts County County Manager. He is in agreement that this uh, would need to be done until such time as both our Board of Commissioners and the Butts County Board of Commissioners could do a resolution asking GDOT to support and fund the engineering and restructure of that Jenkinsburg Road Bridge. Uh, we're looking to start that process um, here within the next 30 days so that we can get that material in front of you. But for immediate sake, we do need to uh, close the bridge for safety concerns. My recommendation is that we cl uh, that you approve the closure of the Jenkinsburg Road Bridge temporarily. All right, do I have a motion to approve? To close the bridge, motion to approve. All right, I have a motion, do I have a second? Okay, I have a motion, a second. Uh, discussion? So this is a permanent closure, or you're, he's saying temporary, but... Temporary yes, ma'am, this would... Our recommendation is that this be a temporarily um, closed bridge until such time as we can get the engineering and GDOT support on uh, restructuring this bridge for safety purposes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. 5-0. Motion carries. Thank you. Now, it is sort of the goal to have this eventually turn into an exit on 75, right? Correct. This is the long range goal for the county is to create an interchange uh, exit entrance in Jenkinsburg. So we, we can't very well speak out of both sides of our mouth. We've got to be able to say that's important to us, but right now health, life, health safety requires us to close that bridge uh, in preparation for what we want to do in the long run. That is correct. Okay, thank you. All right, number nine. Consider appointment to the Spalding, uh, Griffin Spalding Board of uh, Commerce, excuse me, the Griffin Spalding Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Uh, Commissioner Rita Johnson, would you like to do that one more year? I would, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, so appointed uh, uh, to uh, six uh, 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 county manager Steve Ledbetter, would you like to do that for one more year? I uh, would be honored. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I need a motion to approve that. Uh, so moved. All right. I have a set motion and a second by Commissioner Flowers Taylor. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. 5 0. Thank you. Consider appointment to the Griffin Downtown Council. Uh, uh, Commissioner Rita Johnson, would you like mm -hmm. to do that one more time? I would. Yes. All right. Uh, so appointed. I just do that, don't I? Okay. Yeah. Consider appointment to the Griffin Main Street Advisory Board. Uh, Commissioner uh, Dutton, would there. you like to do that? So appointed. Unless, unless you want to switch again. Do you have a favor? I'll, cho I'll choose the lunch, uh, the, noon, <laughs> right. the noon meeting. <laughs> Not the 8 a.m. meeting. I can make it. If I had a choice. No. Okay. If the, you need to work that out, come see me. Right. Well. Sure. Consider appointment to the Griffin Spalding County Area Transportation Committee. Uh, Commissioner Bolden, would you like to do that one more year? Sure. Thank you. So appointed. Uh, to uh, Motion to approve Deputy Chief Bland Hope. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Are those in favor? Signify by raising your hand. 5-0. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Flowers-Taylor, would you like to do it one more time? Yes, sir. Thank All right. You. Thank you. So appointed. Uh, Let's do uh, succeed uh, Todd Harris, Bruce Ballard, uh, which is a position on the board from the school board for one more year. I need a motion to approve. 
Do we put Wait, make what? that or does the school board make that? I, I think no, yeah, that's it's true. our appointment. Okay. But the school board doesn't get appointments, so we agreed right. to like put somebody from and there. It's their there. representatives. Okay, so motion to uh, approve Todd Harris slash Bruce Ballard for the school board position on the transportation committee. Is that how that works? It's really, we're just appointing those two, and it just so happens they know that they come from those. Uh, we're appoint, we're appointing both. That's two different appointments. No, one, they're one. One, one, one seat. It's one seat, but, but one, one can only make half of them. The okay. okay. So Bruce is the alternate for that seat. Okay, I'll take it. All right. Uh, uh, motion. As long as nobody appeals, we'll do it anymore. That's good. Motion to, to approve. Back. So moved. Okay. All those in. I have a fur. We did it. Yeah, that was our time. Okay. Yeah. okay. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Thank you. Uh, consider uh, replacing Debbie Bell with uh, Brad Vaughn for one year, ending uh, December thirty first, twenty twenty two. Motion to appoint Brad Vaughn. Okay, I have a motion to approve Brad. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero motion carries. Good. To approve Steve Ledbetter for one year term ending uh, December thirty one. Steve. To uh, all right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Thank you. A motion to approve uh, Sheriff Daryl Dix to a one year on the same committee. Motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. 5-0. To succeed Bill Bryant for the one-year term ending December 31, 2022. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 5-0. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve Frank Harris for a one-year term ending December 31. So moved. Motion to a uh, second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Thank you. Consider appointment to the Griffin Spalding County Development Authority. Uh, Commissioner Dutton, would you like to do that one more time? Yes. All right, I'm so appointed. Uh, consider motion to uh, appoint person to that. Uh, Kathy, if you'd pull the, the book or Excuse me, we've got to work our way through the book for those that know how that works. All right, is this uh, Mr. Suda? Hold on. Okay. Mr. Suda was not signed. Okay. So he is not even paying attention. Um, James Searcy was uh, nominated by uh, Commissioner Bolden for that position. All right, all those in favor, signify by raising your hand. One, okay. Uh, do we need to do a post if there's only yeah, one? Yeah. Okay, next one. Ne okay, next the in the next book. One is uh, Brent Huckabee. All right, uh, all those. That was, a, that was by you and by Commissioner Dutton. Okay, all those in favor of uh, uh, Mr. Huckabee, please raise your hand. Five zero, Mr. Huckabee will now be appointed to the uh, Development Authority. Consider appointment to the Griffin Spalding uh, County Hospital Authority. Uh, I will continue to do that. Consider to uh, succeed Bernadette Murphy for four year term ending 31 2025. Motion to approve. Was there a motion and a second? And a second. There wasn't a motion and a second on uh, Howell. Oh, Howell? Uh, I thought she had moved her name out of that. No, no. Oh. Did you do? Uh, yeah, I motioned and Ryan seconded. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't catch it. I'm okay, sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Moving fairly quickly. I agree. Thank you. All right. Uh, to succeed Bernadette Murphy. For motion to approve Ms. Bernadette Murphy is to the reappointment of the hospital authority. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Thank you. Consider a point reappointment of uh, myself to the McIntosh Trail Community Service Board as the appointed official to this board. And that's your appointment, right? No, that's a... Uh, do, we, do we have to vote on that one? Or is that his? He appointed himself. That's what I thought. Okay. 
I, I appoint myself to that. Reappoint myself to that. All right. Consider appointment to the Board of Appeals and Adjustment Unsafe Building Abatement Code. Okay, we have two people. James Searcy was submitted by Commissioner Bolton, and Emma Jean Foster Taylor was not signed. Okay, uh, let's uh, take uh, James Searcy. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry to slow you down. Okay. So who, uh, there is, there's two people on there, we can appoint one of them. No, we actually have three openings on this oh my. board. Okay. And this board has not met in 10 years. Ten years. But it is a issue of if, if there is a situation, this board needs to meet. So we continue to ap uh, appoint people to it. All right. Okay, uh, my understanding is that if the person has not, if we haven't signed from it, that we don't consider them, correct? Okay, right. so I'm double checking, make sure. Yes, correct. All right. Does somebody want to sign it? I mean, we only have two people. We have three. I'll sign. Okay. Uh, if not, I, w I will sign. All right. Uh, so, uh, can we vote both of them at the same time? Yeah, you can. Okay. The two names are James Searcy and uh, Emma Taylor. Okay. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Thank you. Okay. Consider appointment to the County Board of Health. I'm going to reappoint myself to the Board of Health. Uh, consider appointment to the Spalding County Collaborative Authority for Family and Children. Uh, Commissioner Rita Johnson, would you like to do that for one more year? I'll be on there one more year. Thank you. So appointed. Or let's put Commissioner Flores there. Did you want to do it? Oh, no, no, no. I was just looking at your red mask. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Ms. Irma Lewis as the law enforcement representative for a one-year term ending December 2022. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. 5-0. Thank you. Consider reappointment of the Spalding County Library Board of Trustees of Barbara Patterson. So moved. Is there anyone in the no. there's there's two uh, 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 two positions, not just one. Barbara Patterson, who is the incumbent, she has asked to continue okay. on the board. So has Virginia Goodman, who is currently on the board. They both asked to be continued and uh, Natalie. Yeah. Yes. Yep. No problem with either one of them being continued on the board. Okay. All right. Do I have so, so can we can we approve both of them tonight? Not Absolutely. just. Okay. All right. Mo motion to approve both. All right. Thank you. I have motion. Do I have second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Motion carries. Consider appointment to the Spalding County Parks and Rec Advisory Commission. Uh, Commissioner Flowers Taylor, would you like to continue that? Be honored to. Thank you. So appointed. Uh, Commissioner Dutton has two. Commissioner Dutton, do you have Chris, both? Yes, Chris I put them in the, the book. Okay, Brian, I'm sorry. Brian Steiner. Okay. And, uh, he, and we don't have to vote on it. He has appointed them. Those are post appointments? Post appointments. Mm -hmm. All right. And I will Fine. have one next time. I just didn't get it in in time, correct? Right. Okay, next. Consider appointment of the Spalding County Water and Sewage Facilities Authority. Commission, uh, Chairman or designee to succeed. Uh, Commissioner Flowers Taylor, would you like to continue to do that? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I um, appreciate you doing that. All right, so appointed. Uh, what's in the book? Okay, we have uh, Mr. Bill Bryant, who is an incumbent, who wishes to continue, and Mr. Jim Skinner, who is an incumbent, who has stated that he wishes to continue. And what? then we have an, an additional one. All right, let's one, take one these one separately, one, the please. Uh, who is the first in the book? Bill Bryant. All right, those in favor? And we've only got one slot for this? No, we've we have two, two we slots. Got three, we got three yeah, we two slots. Three people. All right, uh, those, uh, all those in favor of Bill Bryant, uh, please raise your hand. Two, not enough. All right, thank you. Uh, those in favor of uh, Jim Skinner, raise your hand. Five, so moved. And the next person the is. Next one is Wanda Howell. All right. Those in favor of uh, Wanda Kronikow, raise your hand. Five zero. Thank you. Let me make sure of where I am with this. Uh, okay. Uh, consider appointment to the 
Three Rivers Commission Board of Directors. So exciting. Uh, are you and looking at one? Oh, yes. I'll be happy to start. Oh, okay. I'm Thank sorry. you. I didn't know you were trying to get my attention. All right. Yes. Uh, I'm appointing uh, Commissioner Flowers Taylor to the Three Rivers Board of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, commission uh, reconsider uh, consider appointment to the Two Rivers R C and D Council. Commissioner Dutton, would it's, you like to do that one more time? It's a big responsibility, but I would like to. <laughs> All right. We have one. They meet once a year. That's the yeah. Thing. We have an alternate member, and uh, we. I would like to have that tabled. We are trying to get one person to submit his application. So we'll, uh, if we can table that one. Motion to table the re uh, replacement for to succeed Michelle Irizarry. All right, I have a motion second. and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Five zero. Thank you. Motion tabled. Consider appointment to the West Central Georgia Workforce Investment Board to succeed me. Uh, the appointment is required by to be filled by me, so I will continue. Do I need to? Uh, Motion. No. All right, I will continue to do that. Consider appointment to the Region 6 DBHDD uh, Department of Behavioral Health and Development Disabilities Planning Board. I would like to table that motion. We have nobody in the book to be able to do that or that wants to do this. Ms. Uh, Jackson called and said that she's too old to be making that drive now. This is a drive down to Columbus to make the meetings there. Uh, is this something that can be uh, uh, one of us can sit on this board? Sure. Or does it have to be it have to be a citizen? No. Well, I, I'll sit on that board. Okay, oh, super. Meetings are in Columbus. As long as I don't have to drive at night, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Oh, super. Thank you. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, all right. That takes care of. We, now, is that an appointment, or do we need to vote for? Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to appoint. Second. Commissioner Flowers Taylor, thank Second. you. This is uh, really a big deal for, for me, so thank you for doing that. All right. Uh, all those in favor, signify by raising your hand. I second the vote. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. Just a minute. Let me double Gwen. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we have not heard back from uh, Mr. Brown, so uh, we will table that to find another person or see if he writes back to us. I have a mo do I can I have a motion to table motion that? Motion to table. All right. Second. All right. All those in favor, signify by uh, raising your hand. Uh, five zero. All right. Uh, commissioner, uh, a report of the county manager. That was fast. Yeah, I just wanted to to share with the board of commissioners uh, an up, um, not an update, but just a, a reiterate of our retreat scheduled for this Friday. We will be meeting in Fayette County at the Development Authority beginning at eight o'clock and go until right now it's planned until four. We have Archways, uh, Ms. Sharon Leggett, who is going to support and help us with the facilitation of our retreat this weekend. I'm excited about uh, that opportunity. Um, also wanted to give a, a little bit of a heads up. Our year-end report is being finalized even as we speak. DeAndre uh, Smith and Amy Story are doing just a fabulous job. I've seen a draft of what they are uh, putting together for us and we're excited. We should have the draft ready for your review this uh, this Friday at our retreat. So I'm excited about that. Our SPLOS numbers are coming in good for uh, the month of December and we will share more with uh, with our community over the next 30 days, how we have fared for uh, 2021 with our SPLOSC report. That's the county manager's update. Thank you very much. I'm excited about getting back to work. Uh, being in COVID jail is not the most fun experience, uh, but the plan is, according to the doctor, we will be released on Thursday. So I'm excited about uh, getting back into the office. Now, two things on the retreat so everybody's aware. If uh, Steve can't be there, mm -hmm. I believe we need to uh, postpone the retreat. I don't think we can do what we're trying to do uh, without the county manager being course, there too. Okay, yeah. so just a heads up. If he right. says on Thursday uh, he fails another test, we're mm -hmm. going to postpone that. Secondly, I'm, I'm studying hard. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
Secondly, uh, I start thinking about, uh, I would prefer we all didn't drive over to Fayetteville, so start thinking about pairing up uh, in cars to be able to drive over there. I think three cars is plenty to be able to go over there. We'll pair up and be able to do it that way. We could get into two cars, but if something happens and somebody has to come back, we're really, so uh, start thinking about uh, carpooling over there the, in our own cars. Okay, okay. so thank you. Comments. We'll talk about that in the next couple of days. Kathy will coordinate that for us. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, county manager, you do you have anything for the assistant manager? I do not. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll next go to Commissioner uh, Rita. Well, you answered my questions about the retreat. I, I think I read somewhere where we were, I thought we were going to meet together and then go, but you're saying you want to go in separately, which is fine. I, I, I was thinking we would come okay. here. Oh, come here. Cars, yes, and then go. And then okay. go from here. All right. Now, if you want to do it some other way because okay. you're next to, you live next to, you can do that. But I'm just trying to get us, yeah. it's another hour opportunity for a couple commissioners to spend time together and okay. us save on gas uh, for our economy. Sure. Okay. Um, what time do we want to meet here? 8.45, was it? No, it's supposed to start at 8.30. So we can probably meet here at 8 o'clock and then eight go back Okay. okay. All right. All right. Leave at eight. Probably be here a little earlier than that. Yeah. And I was gonna say, be, uh, dress comfortably, right? Yes. 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 This is dress this, comfortably. Yes. This is in there. Where is it? What, what room is this in, Steve? It's the third floor of the old courthouse, right downtown Fayetteville, oh, and nice it is their development authority's conference room. Okay. okay. So, uh, Kathy will take this and put out some stuff so that we all can get. The time we need to be here right. and uh, Where we start talking stuff? about the directions mm -hmm. and then uh, also uh, who can pair up. Right. Last thing, um, just I believe that there are letters sent out to the new appointments for those authorities. Yeah. Okay, so I want to make sure that Wanda knows that she's, you know, what meeting time and all that kind of stuff. So that goes out to the individual, correct? And yeah. you right. know the time for the water authority. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you for that. All right, that's it. All right. Commissioner? I am, I am good tonight. Okay. Commissioner Flowers Taylor. I'm good, thank you. Man, it's getting close to football time. Okay, All right. Commissioner I, Dutton. I, I am going to take some time, y'all. Okay. Um, I want to thank everybody for for this uh, helping me, especially Kathy, making sure that I get to all the trainings and whatnot uh, to get that certified uh, commissioner from ACCG. Uh, I want to let you know that I'm not not done. I'm still working on getting some more of those tracks done. Mm -hmm. um, to the chagrin of my wife, who doesn't want to lose me on all the weekends that it takes to go into all the trains. Um, <clears throat> that said, um, I, I, I just want to, I want to give a big uh, heartfelt personal thank you from my family uh, to all of you and to everybody else out there that has reached out, uh, shown support, gone out of their way to accommodate. Um, my uh, the the circumstances yeah. around my father's yeah. passing. Um, my father was my hero. Um, his example of love and service um, is um, overwhelming when I think of it. Um, his death was a huge surprise. He was by far the most healthy Dutton. Uh, and um, it's that shock that we're having to get over. Obviously, it's sad to lose a family member, especially one um, so close to so many people. Um, but um, every day we're getting better, and every day we're doing better. And it really is the community's appreciation and support that has really uh, helped us overcome this sudden um, sudden shock um, and I just wanted to say thank you for uh, all that y'all done for for me and my family it really really means a lot and I, I won't forget it and uh, and that's all okay uh, thank you uh, a few things uh, I thought the Christmas lights and thing were absolutely outstanding easily done the start, I wasn't there for the first time, but people driving through and driving through and driving through 
was absolutely outstanding. So I'm very, very pleased with the way that turned out down in there. Secondly, I thought the Christmas parade, yes. thank you, yes. Commissioner Dutton, for absolutely. working so hard on getting awesome. that. Although it rained, it was great. It was still a lot of people mm -hmm. out there, right. and I believe that that was is the best a ever. building block that will go on yes. forever, no matter what the route is. Right. Uh, kids were excited well, about seeing that. Uh, DeAndre and yes, all the staff right. that got and made us mm -hmm. look good, uh, fire department, marsh, sh sheriff, all those people made us look good, and we appreciate uh, having the opportunity to do that. Uh, next to last, I put out some stuff on Archway for you, a calendar, things that we've accomplished in the last really five or six years. Uh, you'll see the one with check mark that says that's what we've done in the last five or six years, and the other sheet that's uh, put together is the new, what we're trying to do in 22, uh, and then a brochure on uh, what 22 looked like uh, uh, there. So uh, I'm trying to keep you up to date on uh, Archway uh, to do that. Lastly, I have uh, truly been absolutely honored to have been uh, chairman for last year and then honored to be the chairman this year. Uh, this has been one of the outstanding things in my life to be able to serve the citizens of uh, Spalding County. Uh, as a lieutenant colonel in the Army was one thing, this is an entirely different business, and uh, I am honored to be able to do that and uh, truly do not take it as something that uh, was given to me or was uh, just, uh, I can't even say the words, so thank you for that. Yay. Um, Good job. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, still a half hour left to go. Do I have a motion, motion to, adjourn? to adjourn? Second. Uh, second. All right. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Thank you. Anybody opposed? So that's what we need to do. We need to have Georgia play every day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> Thank How can you we so work much this out now? <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness.